Hello, this is Nanette Noken and welcome to another edition of It's About Money. Our guest today is Dan Traumatar and we'll be talking about the magic in business. He's a magician and also a motivational speaker. Hope you join us for the next half hour. Dan, welcome to our show. Hi, Nanette. How did you get started being a magician? Well, it, it's an interesting story. My father-in-law is actually who got me into it. When I was a child, my mother had me do some tricks, and she showed me some tricks. And that was fun, but I, I never really developed a passion for it as a child. Uh, years went by. I met my wife. Her father is an amateur magician and has been since he was a small child, maybe five or six. Mm -hmm. And he's dabbled in magic his entire life. When I met her, of course, I met him, and he got me into it. And it's, it's just been a progression since then. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, I've heard of amateur magicians, but not too many professional magicians, except for you know, the billboard shows in Las Vegas. And, you know, so it, it's nice to know somebody who's actually local, who does magic, and is also a motivational speaker. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few magicians in town. There's uh, tons of amateurs. There's actually two different magic societies, the Society of American Magicians and the International Brotherhood of Magicians, both here in town. And uh, they're comprised mostly of amateurs and hobbyists. Uh, a few of those people that are in those organizations also do magic part-time for money. And I would consider them professional. Anyone earning money for a service, I think, is professional. And then there's a few full-time people, like myself. I see. So what kind of investment does one need to make in terms of learning about magic and keeping up with new tricks and the latest and greatest? Well. Uh, investment in, in two different ways. Investment financially mm -hmm. in uh, acquiring materials, books, uh, magic books, videos. Uh, there's a, a magic store here in town that sells uh, tricks and, and instructional materials. Uh, also, of course, uh, if you want to be in any of these societies, you've got to pay your dues, things like that. But the real investment is in time and dedication and commitment to actually practice. Because it's one thing to, to buy a book about tricks, and it's another thing to spend the time reading it, and then it's another thing to spend the hours and hours that it takes to actually perfect a piece. Sure. I was trying to do a magic trick one time, and I, it was so clumsy, I gave up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was not, you're right, investment in time is quite amazing. It is incredible. I, I think that the best magicians are the ones that are able to commit to spending hours and hours in front of a mirror practicing. And it's not, it's not a, a chore, though. It's a passion mm -hmm. for the people who really enjoy it. And I think that's what separates people who have dabbled in magic a little bit as a child and then it goes away to the people who stick, stay with it. It's not because the magician is necessarily committed to the idea I'm going to be a magician. It's just they have no choice. Mm -hmm. It's like in any field that, that's uh, a creative or a performance or any field, really. If, if a person's really committed and passionate, then it's a, a labor of love. Mm -hmm. Now, how do people get to know about you? I mean, you're a full-time magician and motivational speaker, so really you're in business for yourself. Yep. How do you market yourself? Well, as you would expect, I am uh, and as most magicians and performers, I'm a sole proprietor, so I'm the whole thing. If, if I'm not out there knocking on doors or making the phone ring, then the business doesn't happen. So I rely primarily, once I establish myself in a market, on word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So once somebody sees me perform, I perform in a couple different restaurants, and so I'm out in front of the public pretty often. I'm handing out business cards. I'm collecting business cards. I have a monthly newsletter that I send out via email. And so that gets the word out and it starts to spread such that then people start to call me. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's one strategy that I use, word of mouth. The other is cold calls. I pick up the phone and I call people and I say, hey, listen, this is who I am. How might I be able to serve you? Oh, great. So you really have to motivate yourself to make those calls and you know, kind of show your, your uh, magic as um, one part as a magician to show them the things that you can do. Yeah. So wow with them in that way yes. or, then, or make the phone calls. Yeah. And that's where my website comes in because there's lots of printed material on my website, but there's also video clips of me in action. Because I think, well, I'm sure that 
people have a pretty serious preconceived notion of what magic is and what a magician is. And in my experience, that preconceived notion is a guy at a kid's show party with funny clothes and acting goofy. And that's fine. I have a lot of respect for those people. But that's not the kind of magic I do. I perform primarily for adults, uh, cocktail parties, banquets, things like that, as far as my entertainment business. Most people haven't had a chance to see that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Most adults haven't seen a magician up close or in person, unless maybe it's uh, in Las Vegas. And then it's a much more grand affair. Sure. So having video clips on my website helps people understand what it is that I do. The fact that it's uh, silly, as all, all magic can be a little silly because it's all pretend, mm -hmm. but it's also serious and sophisticated and made for adults. I see. So, so basically the components, you've got to study for it, you've got to invest the time to learn and to practice, and you've got to invest the time to show your magic and get to meet other people who might hire you as a magician for an event, a function, and so on. So now I want to see a magic trick. Are you going to be able to show us sure, a trick? Sure, I would love to. Let's, um, let's try this one. This is, this is a piece that's uh, something that I perform when I do uh, entertainment jobs. But it also contains elements of my motivational uh, aspect and the topic for this is perception okay. and how our perceptions can be deceived and also how our perspective can affect what we perceive. You'll see. If I was to show you this, what would you say it is? It's a dollar. It's a coin. Coin. Yep. It's money. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's actually a, a Kennedy half dollar. Oh, half dollar. See, I can't yep. even see too well in my glasses. <laughs> well, that's that's perspective, right? From where you are, it, it's harder to tell. Now, if you had held this in your hand, then you'd be able to get a better look at it. That changes your perspective. Yes. You can you can tell better. Now, depending on also who you are, a small child might say that this is uh, shiny or a circle. Mm -hmm. So your perspective varies your perception. Now, we've looked at something and, and identified it. Now we'll use a sense of uh, hearing. Now, based on the fact that we've seen one coin and that you can hear that, what would you guess might be in my hand? Coins. Coins, absolutely right. This time, oh. it's two foreign coins. Mm, look at that. A Mexican 20 centavo piece uh -huh. and a Chinese coin uh, with a little hole in the center. Oh, isn't that pretty? Now, depending on your perspective, you might call these something different, like worthless. Mm. <laughs> Whereas this one, you might consider a fortune. So we'll use all three coins to demonstrate how our perceptions can be deceived. I'll put all three in my hand, pull out the American coin, the fortune, put that in my pocket. Now, logic dictates that what's in my hand? Um, you've got two coins in there. The two foreign in coins. The, yes, uh -huh. exactly. Uh, we'll switch it up this time, pull out the two foreign coins, mm -hmm. put those in the pocket. Logic tells us that in my hand is the American coin, but right. sometimes mm. Our perceptions can be deceived. Oh my goodness, okay. Maybe you didn't really see what you thought you saw. Maybe you didn't really see the two foreign coins go into the pocket. Maybe they're still in my hand. They're not, but they might have been. Mm -hmm. It's only when our perceptions are deceived that they trade places. Oh dear, okay. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Now we've used a couple different senses. You've used sight to identify the coins. You've used sound. We'll try another sense. Will you hold your hand up? We use the sense of touch. One, two, three. Close your hand around them, please. Turn your hand palm down. Now, in a moment, I need to get in through the thumb side, pull one coin out. Once I do, close tight on everything else that's left. That way, I can't do anything tricky. Okay. So loosen up just a little bit. Let me get the right one out. I've got it squeezed tight. Mm -hmm. Now, you've still got something in there. You can feel that. Mm -hmm. Your sense of touch is telling you that there's something in there. Now, I've taken the American coin, the one that I called a, a fortune. Mm -hmm. But depending on your perspective, a fortune might be worthless. Oh. And what was worthless oh my is goodness. a fortune. Wow. OK. <laughs> and that's how our perceptions can be deceived. Beautiful. Thank you. That's great. That's great. That's amazing. Thanks. So that it took a long time to learn, I'm sure, or maybe uh, not so. Uh, yes, it did. Yep. Uh, not only to learn the, the physical part, uh -huh. but also to integrate the message. Because I, I really think that magic is such a powerful tool for communicating any sort of message, any sort of topic, you can apply to a trick. Now, that same trick could be used to illustrate a different message. So now, as a speaker, you do use your magic in illustrating a point. Yes, I do. That's actually core to 
well, everything that I do. It's, it's about the real secrets of magic. You know, quite often people think about the secret of magic is how the trick works. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's true, but it's only a, a tiny little bit. I think that the real secrets of magic are the same as the real secrets for success in any endeavor. Commitment, perception, teamwork, creativity, the self-fulfilling prophecy. These are the things that make a, a really successful magician and a really successful human. Hmm. It's really nice to be able to make that parallel. It, it's a very powerful tool. And, and it really helps, I think, engage audiences because now I'm not just talking mm -hmm. and they're listening. There's also a visual thing. And that visual message ties the, message, tie, ties the, the topic in so well. And, and I've found that when people experience a moment of, of wonder, mm -hmm. their minds open. Mm. And that's a perfect chance to stick a message in there. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of speakers, but there are not a lot of magicians who can speak and use the magic in the process of delivering the message. That's true. That's true. There's, there's a few people like me that have, have transitioned from speaking into, or from magic into speaking. But I've, I've kind of come full circle because before I was a magician, I was a, an educator. I taught photography for seven years. Right. And so I was used to being in front of groups and, and conveying messages. They were technical messages about uh, how to do photography and also how to communicate through the medium of photography. And then I learned magic and left speaking, and I, or left teaching, and I felt, felt a real loss there because I wasn't able to communicate in the same way. Mm -hmm. So now I've come full circle and I've integrated the education with the magic and I found such a perfect fit. That's great. So it's really a culmination of your life experiences that brings you to having the business that you have now as a magician and, and speaker. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's what helps uh, make it feel more authentic. Mm -hmm. Because magic can seem so fake. Mm -hmm. Because it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a trick. It's, it's a pretend thing. But by having this all based in, in my real reality, the stories that I tell in my programs, uh, the tricks that I do are really products of, of reality, of my life. Mm -hmm. or, or products of other magicians' lives. I, I tell stories about other magicians as well. But it all comes from my firsthand experience with these people. And so it, it feels more authentic. Well, oh, because it is. Yeah, it sounds like, so you've been a speaker for the last four years, and how long have you been in the business of magic, performing magic? I became interested in magic through my father-in-law mm -hmm. roughly nine years ago. I see. And I was a hobbyist, I would say, for a good year or so. And back to the investment side, I had invested enough money into books and videos and conferences and lectures and different things that I thought, well, it's, it's time to make a little money out of this whole endeavor. So I approached a restaurant and I started to do magic uh, in a restaurant for a little bit of money. And that just was a, an effort to become self-sustaining so that I could sustain my hobby. Mm -hmm. But very quickly, it became apparent that the service was, uh, there was a need for that service. And so I started doing it more and more, and slowly over time, my teaching load went down and my magic load went up, and I made that transition. Oh, very nice. That's great. So it sounds like you really calculated the amount of risk that you were taking in terms of jumping from an employee to being self-employed. Yes, I did. It's uh, there's certainly a lot of risk, mm -hmm. as you can imagine, uh, but it's paid off. Mm -hmm. It's paid off. There's ups and downs, as with any self-employment uh, situation. but. Uh, overall, the, the benefits are not only financial but personal. I get a great deal of satisfaction from, from performing and from speaking. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really a big secret, too. I mean, you've talked about, alluded to the secret of being successful in business, the motivation, you know, the, the, the technical knowledge and all that. But you've got to have the passion and also the interest, you know, the desire, the burning desire to be in it. So that's yeah. great. That's great. A lot of people venture into being self-employed, but then they don't think about all the aspects. And they might have a great idea, but they don't back it up with the motivation, the strategy of planning financially. Because it can hurt someone's financial picture tremendously if they're not prepared for it financially. Sure, sure. So. And I'm fortunate, and, and I think a lot of other magicians and performers who go out and do this are also fortunate in the fact that they've got a, a bit of a, a support structure. Mm -hmm. My wife has a, has a great job. Mm -hmm. And so there's that steady income that if I have a rough month, well, that's all right, because we know that we've got Katie's uh, situation that's providing for us. Mm -hmm. And then 
I have a great month, mm -hmm. and and the the tables turn. Sure. So it's a it's a good partnership. Yes, it evens. That's wonderful. It's nice to have all that structure and in the background. That's great. I'm very impressed in how you've been able to manage your business very well. Thank you. So now you also speak not only in Rochester but also throughout the country. Is that right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I I travel all over. I, tomorrow actually I'll be at RIT doing a keynote, mm -hmm. but at the end of the month I'll be in Eugene, Oregon, doing a a, a speaker. A, a, a speaker, no, sorry, an educator awards, like a teacher of the year awards, and they've got me coming in for that. I'll, I go pretty well anywhere. Mm -hmm. And again, you make the contacts through word of mouth and also picking up the telephone? Yeah, yep, yep. This, the one in Oregon, that's going to be a, a word of mouth. Actually, it's a, a former client, someone who hired me as an entertainer years ago when I lived in Oregon, mm -hmm. and now they've have, they're having me in as a an, an, uh, speaker. That's wonderful. Mm. That's wonderful. I, you know, never ventured. I mean, kind of magic is sort of out there, but don't really think about it in terms of having it as a business. And you have done a very nice job it, making it a successful business. Yeah. That's well, great. it's it's show business, and it's important to remember that show is the small word and business is the big word. Mm -hmm. But the business is so much more important. You know, for every hour that I spend performing, I spend 10, 12 hours in the office, sure. getting the work, invoicing, running all the day to day business stuff, the stuff that I don't really care to do, but it's just a part of the reality of if I'm going to be a performer, mm -hmm. then that has to be a, the, pri the primary focus of my time. I see. That's great. So you have the whole structure. It seems like you're also great with the computers and you know how to make sure that your website's working. Now, did you do that yourself? Did you do your own website as well? I, I did, oh, yes. My my, now, my first website, a good friend of mine in Los Angeles who specializes in doing uh, websites for magicians. It's actually the name of the company, Websites for Magicians. Ah. And so he did my first website, and then he taught me how to do my own. So the speaking side of my website is is all homemade. I and that's I think that is attributable to my education at RIT in photography. They taught me all about Photoshop, mm -hmm. which allowed me to, to focus in and, and understand how to build a website. So I really am a, a one-man shop. Yeah, man yeah. of many trades. <laughs> <laughs> Jack of all trades yeah. and a master of none. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Anyways, it's been wonderful talking with you. We'll take a station break. Um, we're talking to Dan Trometer, a magician and motivational speaker. We'll be right back. Get a job. Look, it's a giraffe. I don't see it. The less art kids get, the more it shows. Are yours getting enough? Art. Ask for more. Americansforthearts.org. If you have any questions, please email Nanette at nnocon at aol.com. Welcome back. I'm Nanette Nokan, host of It's About Money. Our guest today is Dan Tramator. He's a magician and a motivational speaker, and he's been entertaining us and also telling us about his business of magic and speaking. Thanks again for being here, Dan. It's my pleasure. Now, earlier you talked about your interest in magic as a young child, and then later on when you met your wife and met his father um, about magic. Can you tell me about the transition? Were you always interested? Was it a continuous interest in magic? I think I was always interested, but I don't think any more than any other average American. You know, as a child, I was very interested because my mother would show me tricks, and she bought me some books, and I got some things out of the library and, and learned tricks. Uh, in fact, I can show you one. But then later, it, it went away. Mm -hmm. I, I think, as with many young boys, their other interests came in the field, <laughs> and, and it, magic went away until I met my wife and saw her father do magic for me. And it fascinated me. Mm. It's just incredible. And, and at first, as a good magician would do, he didn't tell me how to do it. He just showed me the tricks and left me baffled. Mm. But I showed enough interest in learning about it that he slowly started to, to show me some very simple things. And I learned those and, and proved that I could do them and that I possessed the dedication that, that was necessary. And then he would show me more and more. And then he took me to a magic convention. Mm -hmm. And 
And then, then I was hooked yeah. because then I got to see all these different magicians doing all kinds of things, uh -huh. things that he hadn't done or things that he couldn't do. Uh -huh. And it was incredible. It was the difference between a trick and magic. Yeah, it's like being a kid in a candy store, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, it was, yes. Now, will you show us another trick? Then? Yes, I, in fact, I'll show you the difference between a trick and magic. And maybe oh, okay. I can get someone from the audience to uh, come up with, do, do you have a bill that I can borrow? Come on up. Okay, great. Do you have a, a bill of some sort, a five, a 10, 20? Yeah. Yeah. This trick is hilarious with a hundred. A five is Got good. A volunteer now, here, Carl. <laughs> before you even take that, uh, before I even take that, please take the marker and just jot your name across the face of the bill. Across the face? Yeah. Of course, this is a felony, but it's okay. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, like I mentioned, this is the difference between a trick and magic. This is one of the tricks that I learned as a child. Now, you can see how Lincoln is heads up, face up. I learned this trick that if you fold a bill into a nice little bundle, a little packet like this, when you unfold the bill, Abe Lincoln turns upside down. No, well, I was I five. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a great trick. It's a trick. Okay, okay, you were a kid. It's <laughs> just a trick. Okay. Yeah. But then I got older, and I was introduced in magic, and, and I learned that there is magic in the world. Now, the magic doesn't have anything to do with these folds. The magic comes from the magic move, and the magic move looks like this. And instead of turning Abe Lincoln upside down, he turns into George Washington. Oh, no. We don't want that for our clients. <laughs> That's right. Depreciation. Depreciation, exactly. Now, Nanette, remember when I pulled the coins out, out of the little purse? Mm -hmm. Now, that purse has been sitting there the entire time. Mm -hmm. Empty hands reach in, and inside now is a bill. <laughs> it's a five. It's got Carl's name on it. Oh my goodness. And that's the difference between a trick and magic. magic. Thank you so magic. much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh dear. Wow, that's incredible. Thanks. Well, I'm glad that we got we retrieved the five. Yes, that's right. <laughs> As a money <laughs> show, we wouldn't want the five to shrink to a one. But right. I like the one being five again. <laughs> that's really good. Now, let's talk about the motivational aspect or the speaking aspect of your, your business. And you do workshops as well. I do. How, how, what kind of topics do you have, and how do you incorporate magic into that? All of my programs, whether it's just entertainment, or a speech, or a, a training workshop, all focus on the real secrets of magic, which, as I mentioned, are things like commitment, teamwork, creativity, the self-fulfilling uh, self prophecy, uh, perspective and perception. Uh, those are the real secrets of magic. And so in my, let's say, in my presentations, my speeches. I talk about how magicians use each of those topics and then how those topics, those principles can be applied for use and success in any endeavor. So let's say for uh, perception, I might do this piece that we did with the coins. Mm -hmm. Or I have some optical illusions where, of course, perception is key in, in optical illusions. And, and maybe you look at a photograph and you don't see what it is at first. And then slowly your perceptions change and then you can see what the photograph is of. The same thing is true in real life. Sometimes you don't really see what's in front of you. You don't see certain aspects about the people that you deal with every day. You don't understand what their perspective is. But once you have that new appreciation, then it's impossible to go back to your old way of looking at the world. Mm -hmm. Um, commitment, too. I've got a fantastic illustration of commitment that maybe you can help me with. Okay. Uh, like I mentioned, magicians are able to commit to the impossible. Mm -hmm. And without that, it's not magic, it's just a trick. Uh, a magician has to be able to not only commit to practicing a lot, but they have to believe in the reality of this th that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's the same as some of the real visionaries in the world that they see a vision of a reality that could be that no one else really sees. You know, a, a Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. They see the reality that it doesn't have to be this way. Nobody else on that bus felt that. Mm -hmm. But she saw the vision of something and she committed to it and made that change. And that's magic. And you know, these are tricks. That's magic. Mm -hmm.
So let's let's try your commitment. Okay. That okay. Sounds good. Good. We'll use a, a pack of cards. Okay. And uh, there's two jokers. We'll use those. I'll have you use those in just a moment. I'll have you though first think of one of these. And the way I'll do that, I'll just run my finger along the edge of the pack like this. Whenever you like, you just tell me when to stop. And I have to see it when I. It is. It's a card that I have to That's see. That's right. Okay. Stop. There. Do you want me to go farther? Uh, go further. Go further. Stop. That. One. Mm -hmm. You like that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember it. Burn an image of it into okay. your mind. Okay. And we're also going to use the jokers. Okay. So go ahead, pick those up, and put them any place you like into the pack. But please do it face up, okay. and and together. Oh, okay. Wherever you like. Um. Okay. Good. And did they actually go together? Good. Yes, they did. Please take everything and square them right up. Now, you've got a card in your mind, yes? Mm -hmm. So picture that card. Make a good mental image of that. Mm -hmm. That'll be the goal, okay. that, that card. Picture the card. And now imagine those two jokers that you just put into the deck together and face up. Mm -hmm. You see those? Mm -hmm. Now, this is the tricky part. In your mind, imagine your card now in between the two jokers. Okay. You can see that. Mm -hmm. Please spread the cards out. We're looking for the jokers. Oh, did they go away? No, I think they're still oh, in there. There's okay. one. Okay. Spread just a little more above and below. Oh, okay. oh good, 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 good. Okay. Now, there is a card in between the jokers. Yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> I would say through your commitment. Uh -huh. Now, you've imagined a card. And this is pretty interesting, right? Because since the time that you put those jokers in there, I didn't touch the card. Right. They were in your control the entire time. But right. you imagined a card in between. And there is one there now. So for the first time, what's the card you were thinking of? A seven of hearts. The seven of hearts. I believe that when you commit to your goals, you can achieve the impossible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Excellent work. That is great. Amazing. Oh, it is, <laughs> and, 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 and I think it's a, a fantastic illustration. I mean, it's a good trick, mm -hmm. but I think that attaching that message to it makes it all the more powerful. Mm -hmm. So it's really a lot of visualizing, because many motivational speakers talk about you know, writing your affirmations, visualizing. Yes. So here you visualize it, and it comes together with that vision, like uh, you were talking about Rosa Parks' commitment and, and that's vision. That's absolutely right, and, and I was taught this not the trick, but, the, but that general principle of, of seeing things and believing, really believing and committing to them uh, by a mentor of mine in community college in Michigan, uh, a man named Barry Stearns, a very energetic and inspirational man who taught me that if you really believe something and you commit to it and, and use different tools, visualization, um, like you said, writing out mm -hmm. statements, uh, self-talk, drawing pictures of your goals, right. uh, that that really helps. And it seems, being a magician, most magicians are rather skeptical in nature. And so I, I constantly struggle with this real conflict of, it just seems so fuzzy, feely, all this mental, but I've seen it work. Mm -hmm. And so I know how powerful it can be. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Dan Traumator, who's a magician and motivational speaker. I wish you the best in your magic and the workshops that you do. Thank you. Take care. And thank you, our audience, for joining us today in our segment of It's About Money with Dan Traumator, a magician and motivational speaker in the magic of business. Thank you. Until next time, I'm Nanette Nokan. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please email Nanette at nnocon at aol.com. Following production was produced through Pentfield Community Television in Pentfield, New York.